And the other thing is action. I want you to do it right away. Do it, do it, do it. See? And a sense of urgency. you got to do it. If you don't do this now, you'll never have enough. No, this is your once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to prove yourself. See? You know that sort of talk. <laughs> you know, advertisers take advantage of that, don't they? But anyway, you got the idea, so something in you pushes you forward. See? And then you give in to what's pushing you. Well, that's that's how we give in to the dark side. See? So much better it would be if you stood back before all of that. If you nipped it in the bud by standing back right away, being reminded right away. Okay, so now, um, so what would be some basic principles then? We, we could elucidate some principles that would help you to not get go down that path to the point of no return. There's a kind of a point of no return, isn't there, when you, when you, there's something naughty and you're just about ready to look at it or just about ready to do it. There's a point there where you could turn back. But if you stay there and you entertain it, once you're at that point, you're in danger. That's why in the Bible, sometimes it said, flee from temptation. <laughs> Someone said, please, you know, Joseph, remember Joseph? He went into a house and there was a, some lady there that was had bad intention, naughty lady. And he, f he flew. He turned around and ran. There are other examples like that. Sometimes that's what you, you, the best thing to do. A cute story again, because I told it yesterday, but I, I, I didn't give the, uh, the reason behind it. So let me tell it again. I heard this from J. Vernon McGee. He said a mom baked some cookies, and then she put them in the cookie jar in the pantry. And that evening, she was up in her bedroom, and then she, and she had a little boy. And she was up in her bedroom, and she heard a noise downstairs, and she said, Johnny, where are you? He said, I'm in the pantry. She said, what are you doing? He said, I'm fighting temptation. But then J. Vernon McGee made the excellent point. He said, the pantry is not the place to be fighting the temptation. Shouldn't have gone into the pantry in the first place. See? So you don't want to reach that point of no return. You want to be reminded so you can pull back before that. Pull back. Yeah, you can pull back at the end too, but much better if you if you pull back ahead of time. That's why the the mystic, uh, the true Christian mystics, people like uh, Teresa of Avila or, or um, Miguel de Molinos, St. John of the Cross, people like that. They talked about recollection, um, ret a retirement, a pulling back. See, it's an attitude that, that results in a state of being. See, it's an attitude of, of pulling back a little bit. Okay? Going out into the world. So then what would be some principles that would, that would help you to, to be able to pull back? The earlier you pull back a little bit, the better. And the best would be to be in a permanent state of being pulled back a little bit. To have the big picture, to have taken a mental step back and then, and then go through life with the big picture. Which, which is Christ said, which is in the, in the Bible it says to be in the world but not of the world. To be in the world but not of the world. See, to go through life without life going through you. To have a little distant, little, little, um, Slight bit of bit of distance, so you don't get pulled into things. See, all right. So then, when you have that, then you're very easily reminded. All of a sudden, you're lost in thoughts, and then you, you very quickly realize it and pull back, and you're no longer lost in thoughts. See, um, something's too important, rushing for something, and you see it, and you don't. Then you stop rushing. It's called awareness. It's called getting the big picture. See? It's being in the world but not of the world. See? It's always, always delicately look, with always delicately wanting to do what you know is right in your heart for each moment. But without effort. See? So how do you find this effortless state um, where you also know peace? The peace of God. See, it's when you get pulled into things. You get pulled into gossip and 
all the things that are happening at the office and people and frantic behavior and the traffic is rushing. When you get pulled into it and it gets to you, see, and then your peace is gone. See, that's why there's, you know, sometimes we need to withdraw, don't we? Christ would go off to a quiet place by himself to pray to the Father. He would lift up his eyes and pray to the Father. But he was also most of the time with people and all of their needs and their issues and everything. He was there, see, with them. Well, so you have to you have to be a mom or a dad or a, a, um, a neighbor, a worker. You have all these things. So, you, so then you go out in life and then do all the things that you do and recreation and do your work and everything, but just with a little bit of mental distance. So what would be some of the things that would protect this state of detachment? See? Detachment. Mental distance. A little bit of recollection. To be in the world but not of the world. What would protect it? Well, first of all, what we said. Never make anything too more important than what you know in your heart. Okay? Don't set goals or make goals. Okay? Read lightly. Don't study. Okay? Um, what else would protect this, this state? Watch out for resentment. Okay? And watch out for anger. Which are, that's what happens when you form a judgment. So don't form a judgment of other people. Learn to just observe people like you're on vacation. See, that's a bit of detachment also, isn't it? When you're on vacation, you travel around and you look at all the buildings and people and the beautiful river and the trees and everything. It's just so interesting, see? And you just look at it like a little child, you know, in the back seat of a car looking out the window and seeing many things, but not forming judgments. So go through life without saying, oh, she's good and I like her, but I don't like him and he's this and she's that and this is no good and this is a good chair and that's a bad chair and... Just just go through life and just observe things without naming them, without judging them. Just go through life like that, okay? Sometimes you will discern, see? Yes, you will discern. All of a sudden there's something and you, you can discern that it's not something to be involved with. You, you just discern it. And then you just don't get involved. It's very simple. That's what discerning is. So... Never make anything more important than what you know in your heart. Okay? Don't study too hard. Okay, it's all right if you're taking a class, you can read the book and everything, but don't get lost in the study. Okay? Don't get lost in thoughts. Pull back. See, lost in thoughts. Daydreaming about this or that or planning the future or reliving the past. Okay? Don't set goals. Okay? Don't resent people or judge them. Just observe people. If if someone has a fault, then see it. If they do something that's that is not right, then see that it's not right. But just don't hate them for it. Don't judge them for it. See how simple that is. So these things protect that state of of, of having taken a mental step back. Now the little little technique that I have talked about is is um, which I've talked about in many of my meditations. The easiest of all is the meditation itself. Close your eyes. Look at the inside of your eye, eyelids. Okay? And look at the little patterns of light, the little particles of light, little pixels of light, little, little glow of light on the inside of your eyelids. That's the, and then at the same time, be aware of your hands. So you feel your hands uh, tingle a little bit as you're aware of them. Okay? And that's the, that's the meditation. If you do that five minutes, so you're looking at the inside of your eyelids and at the same time aware of your hands. Feel the, feel the blood flow into your hands. Notice your hands, okay? So you do that little exercise five minutes in the morning and, and Again at noon for five minutes and evening five minutes, and then as you go out through the day, once in a while you can, you you can close your eyes even just for a minute, half a minute or a minute. Okay, and as you're well, if you go on a nice walk, you can sometimes remember to be aware of your hands as you're walking. 
And when you're sitting somewhere, if you're sitting quietly in a chair, sometimes you can lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. See the clouds and the blue sky. It's nice. Be aware of your hands. It gives you a little bit of detachment. And if you start to do that, then you will notice that more and more you will quickly snap out. When you're about to get angry, you won't. See? When you were um, lost in some kind of thoughts, then all of a sudden you snap out. And you, you're more present. You're there. See? You're actually there. And you'll discover that you're there for your family, for your partner, for your kids. Instead of being lost in a, in a, in a uh, conversation on the iPhone, or lost in texting, or lost in worrying, or you'll still be able to do things. You'll be able to do everything. Fill out your tax forms, pay bills, mow the grass, wash the dishes, wash clothes, okay? Um, go to work, put gas in. You'll still do everything, but just not with the same um, mental, emotional involvement. Instead of getting lost in things, see, then you, you'll you have this little bit of detach, so you'll be calmer. And you'll begin to experience um, peace of mind. Okay? And you'll be less stressed out. Okay? So, it's all good. It's very, see how simple it is? It's simple, very simple, but good. Okay? My name is Roland.